Hi, I'm Ellen D. Williams, and this is The Greatest Day Interviews. Uh, so tell us how you became an actor. What's your journey? Um, well, I kind of grew up in front of a television. I literally would just sit myself in front of the TV and just watch it, like, up close, really up close. And I just, uh, I don't, I grew up on variety shows, the Carol Burnett Show, the Donnie Marie Show, and uh, I just loved them. And... I don't know, Brady Bunch, that was like a huge one for me. And I I don't know, there was just something about it that I wanted, I wanted to do that. I just, I don't know, just like a TV kid. And uh, and then so, I mean, I guess the long story short, I, you know, I got involved. Uh, I always wanted to do it. Got involved in high school, then did community theater shows. I got my degree in theater and performance at Cal State Long Beach. And then I think I got my I got my first professional show at 20. I did a show called uh, Moby Dick, A Whale of a Tale. <laughs> uh, and it was produced by Cameron McIntosh. And that was that was awesome. And uh, it was like my first time away from home and I was getting paid to act and sing and and then I graduated from college. I lived in Seattle for a short time and I acted there with a with an educational theater company. Came back to LA eventually and always was an actor but had a day job and then um and then I got what I guess people would say uh, what was like your break and then I I did a, a showcase. ABC does a diversity showcase every year, and I did that in 2008. And then a couple years later, uh, Marissa Ross, who cast How I Met Your Mother, uh, remembered me because they were specifically looking for a Filipina. And um, and then that kind of started my TV career. Can you tell what do you like most and what do you like least about the audition process? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, what I like most is probably um, the ability to to try different things or get to know a different kind of character. Uh, but the thing I don't I like the least is I, the everything. <laughs> like <laughs> I just I I don't I, I auditioning is not a fun thing for me necessarily like I really have to kind of mind I have to help myself uh because it's I get really I, I get a little it's really nerve-wracking for me um and even I mean any part big small I just I don't know why uh especially lately and I I I think too because I I'm a perfectionist so I want I want to make sure all the lines are right and I want so you know and I want to make sure it's what I think it's supposed to be and so I think you know it's just it's a, it's hard the audition process for me is is not it's not necessarily a fun <laughs> thing um when you're performing and you actually get in there are you aware of what you're doing or do you slip into the character completely how does that work for you uh I think with television, I, I, I am aware of what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, I'm aware that I'm playing a character, but at the same time, it's hard to not be. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love theater and I miss theater so much. It's like you're on that stage and you're interacting with other people, actors, characters, and then you can't see beyond, usually beyond. And so you just are in that world and you just kind of, I don't know, it's just, and it's live. And I think that's the other thing too. Like when you have to do multiple takes of the same thing, it gets to be a little, um, yeah, it's not as fulfilling maybe. Uh, so. Do you like auditioning for commercials? I do. I do. I like auditioning for commercials. I, um, unless I have to, unless it's like, please dress like an opera singer or, 
come in your best caroling outfit. And I'm like, I don't have that. Like, I th- those things I don't necessarily enjoy, like having to come up with, like, cost- huge costume pieces. Because um, I had one where I had to, like, come in, like, a caroler's outfit. And then I've had some other ones, too, that were, like, I'm like, I don't- how do I put this together by tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> but I do like them because you don't, you just walk in. I mean, but that's what I, I mean, I love improv and I love just not having to memorize anything. I mean, that's my dream. Okay. Since you like improv, you like to cold read? I do like to cold read. Sure. So this is from a play called Self-Defense. Okay. Tim Spot rises on a lone woman in a jail cell. Okay. Hmm. Um. I try to remember a time when I was not ashamed. I gotta go pretty far back. I don't even know if, if I just can't remember back that far if there was never was one. They take your baby away at 14. That's a, well, even before that, when I was a kid, I was ashamed and getting beat. All I know is when I was taking care of you, I was not ashamed of anything I had to do because I had a reason. I had you to take care of. Like an angel on this earth breathing next to me. Nothing I did could leave a stain on me. It's the only time in my life I have not been ashamed just a living. A living. Been ashamed just a living. What I had to do to keep my own miserable self breathing. But if I was alive so you could live, well, that made sense. And if I gotta die so you can live. That makes the most sense of anything I've heard yet. So you picked that because you knew that it would get me. I picked it because it's that's a, a good that's play. A nice, it's that's a good, a good monologue. That's a good monologue. Is she, is she supposed to be Southern? She's, uh, it's based on Eileen Warnos. Oh, shit. <laughs> I should have probably known that. It's by Carson Kritzer. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's Thank a good. Thank you for. That's a good. That's a good monologue. <laughs> You're gonna memorize it now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, excuse me, while I put this in my repertoire <laughs> that I don't have. Do you prefer comedy or drama? I know you've done a lot of comedy, but I, th- <laughs> I think that yeah, I I yeah, I do prefer comedy, and I like dramedy. <laughs> I like a little bo- a bit of both if I if I can I mean I feel like most shows nowadays a lot of especially the really the ones that I really like and I'm drawn to are kind of a bit you know funny and tragic at the same time. What are your so. favorites? Some of your favorites. Your obsession shows. Oh, my current obsession show as you know is Gentleman Jack. Uh but I love everything that Sally Wainwright does, as, <laughs> as I know you do too. Uh, but I, I, I can't wait for Fleabag to come back. I can't like. I really enjoyed Shrill. Um, you kind of just want to move to England. And oh yes, Fleabag. right. Yeah, Fleabag is uh, Shrill's not, but yeah, yeah. F- Fleabag. Uh, yeah, I, th- I love and I love shows that have strong women and and women who are in my age bracket i have written a pilot which i'm hoping i'll sell and be able i've wrote it as a vehicle for myself uh and yeah i i've you know i'd say a lot a lot of times i mean like times to people that now I mean, we can do whatever. We have the ability with the little thing that we carry around all day long, our phones. Um, We have YouTube. We have all the ways to make and and produce our own stuff. I don't necessarily want to independently produce my own things, um, but I do want to tell my own stories. And I, I think I'm in that place in just my life where it's important to me to want to tell the stories that I want to tell. But to also, I'd love to employ my friends and I'd love to employ people that I admire. And I, that, I, I just want to create that feeling of like 
community in a way. I mean, I, I think, again, that's what I miss about theater also. That doesn't, unless you're a series regular, and you can feel it as a recurring, but that feeling of a, of a group working together to make something. And I'm, I'm excited about that. That's what I, I want to do. Are there producers or showrunners or directors that you would specifically, if you could reach out to them, um, who would they be? And do you find that hard in Hollywood to reach out? Um, I do and I don't. I think if I don't think about it, there are times where I came up with this word. I didn't come up with the word. <laughs> I came up with my own definition of the word. Uh, and I call it merging. Um, you know, when you're like driving and you in a, you're in a merge lane and you just are like, you look behind to make sure it's safe to merge and it looks like it's safe to merge. And, and then, but you have no idea, like somebody could be going so fast right up the same lane and smack right into you. So I just like, you just commit, like you just go, I'm committing and you just merge. Um, and I, I sometimes do that make myself do that. Like, and it happens usually very late at night. I might write an email to somebody and, you know, say, you know, look, what, you know, I, I'm reaching out because of this or, uh, and so I do, there are times for me when I, it's easy and there's times for me when I get a little nervous, um, or uh, paralyzed, <laughs> uh, in, in, in doing so. Uh, but I think that with social media and, uh, there are so many ways of reaching out to people nowadays. Do you find it uh, effective? Um, I, I think it can be. Sure. Um, I think it can be. Yeah. I'm very sleuthy too. Like I always do my homework before I reach out to someone. Um, and sometimes it is effective to just maybe reach out yourself. be a good, nice person, <laughs> you know, because it doesn't matter like how much experience you have. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, a lot of it, this is luck. Of course, talent is so helpful. Uh, uh, so much is timing. And so, and any, I always say anything, your life could change in an instant. You could get that audition and then get cast in that role that could change your life. Um, and so always be prepared, live a balanced life and, and don't overthink any, don't overthink it. <laughs> what, uh, what is one thing that bothers you when you watch television? Children. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, uh, in movies, I really, all the children ruin everything in movies. Um, but I love children. Movies or horror movies? Like or horror what? movies or like thrillers. And I'm always like, oh God, that kid's going to just F everything up. Uh, but in television, I'm not, uh, I, um, I think when they, they treat the audience kind of stupid you know or I am so detailed and I'm so detail oriented that I I I feel like I visually can see like the lines of a story um that if something is not correct right see <laughs> Uh, that it bothers me. It'll bother me if I, and it's not even like a continuity thing necessarily, but like if a character, I'm like, no, that character would never do that. Or, or it seems like at some point something gets lazy. I don't, I don't, that's not, that bugs me the most. What do you love about watching mm. TV? Um... I think just being able to like escape or I think the best feeling of television is to be able to go, Oh, I like, I get that. Right. I mean, I think that's the best 
part of television. It's the best part of film. It's any art form that you get to experience or watch. I mean, even dance or, you know, music when you are just like, Ugh, get, I feel that, or I get that. Um, and if you can, if that happens, cause it's not going to happen for everyone. Not everyone's going to relate to every story and every feeling. Right. So, but when that happens, I think it's, it's special. Like when you can go, Oh God, that, you know, when you really, and you know it, you know it when you feel it to your core and, and you and I know it, like when we, when someone's delivering a monologue or in a scene on television, we're just like, we both, you know, react in a way that yeah. you, yeah. yeah, Patricia Arquette, ugh, like, it's like, you just, you're like, fuck, like, that was amazing. Or when you see something that you can say, that's going to win her the Emmy, you right. know, that's where she's going to get the Emmy nom, or that's where she's going to get the Oscar nom, or, you know, that right there, that is special. I would have to say um, that I would, this has changed recently. So I would have to say uh, Michelle Williams. I mean, because come on. Uh, yeah, I would say Michelle Williams. Right now, today, I would say Michelle Williams. Ellen Williams and Michelle and Michelle Williams. Williams. <laughs> it's like a buddy comedy. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be fun. Uh, or, uh, oh, can I do one more? Yes, yeah, sure. Melissa M M McCarthy. Ugh, I would love to work with her. That's a buddy comedy. That's the buddy comedy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Those are those are two ladies I'd I'd, I'd love to work with. So many, but those, I, you're asking me right now in this moment. Yes. I would love to do a Broadway show. I would love that. Not a musical. I would love to do a Broadway play. Like that is a huge, huge bucket list. I think, oh, if I could do that, I just, yeah. Yeah, I want to do that. I want to be in a, in a Broadway in a Broadway show, and just act the shit out of it, <laughs> and be around other actors who act the shit out of it, and just like, oh, I just can't. That would be amazing. <laughs>